Hi there, my name is Robert Cook and I'm a trainer for RPAS Training and Solutions which is based on the sunny little seaside town called Claymer on the south coast of New South Wales. Now we've put together this video to help you pass your multi-rotor flight assessment which normally comes at the end of the five day training week. In this video we've put together tips and lessons that will help you not only fly well but also pass that test. So sit back, enjoy, grab a cup of coffee, some popcorn and take it easy. Thanks very much. Now throughout these training videos we're going to be using a flight simulator called Aerosim RC. Now I think you can still get it on the net, I'm not sure. Um, it's been around for a while but it's still good. It requires a dongle and of course the software um, and of course a radio control transmitter, a standard radio control transmitter. Produces a fairly good result, really good for training and you'll see the results in the videos that follow. Aerosim RC, check it out. Now in the uh, video following um, this is the layout that we have for our course, our circuit. We have six cones and you can buy these cones at a sports shop. Just little cones like that. Orange ones are good in the grass. Six cones laid out like this. Square shape. Two squares basically. Uh, 12 to 14 meters deep. And from the center cone 10 to 12 meters across. So that'd be 10 to 12 meters across this way as well. Laid out as such. This is the home position where you take off and land. You don't really want to take off and land on top of a cone. It'll uh, the uh, props will lift the cone and chop it all up. Um, so the drone's just in front of that um, home cone. I call that the home cone. Call that the rear cone. I call this the front line and that's about the circuit so that's the best way to practice don't fool yourself with um, just flying without cones as a reference um, part of the uh, test is to see how accurate you are if you were uh, within a meter of these cones that's um, fine so 500 mil radius so if your drone stops here we're not going to cry you don't need to sort of like go zigzagging all over the place trying to get it bang over the cone. The thing is just to see how accurately you can fly along these lines out and back and so forth for each of the tests. So there you have it. So you can set up a circuit as shown. Yes, yeah, so before you go away and fly it's probably a good idea to set some limits on that drone so it doesn't fly away or fly into that tree which could be really nasty. So we suggest setting the maximum distance to about 25 meters and set your maximum height to 30 meters. Now those two numbers will put you in a box that will enable you to do all of the flight assessment um, tests. Um, they, none of them exceed those distances and also provide you that with that wall of safety, that geofence to keep you in. You also want to set your return to home height to 30 meters. Now it just so happens you can't set a return to home height any less than your maximum height. So your maximum height is basically set your return to home height anyway. So enter those figures and you'll be in a safe box for flying. And as we said before, please do not fly in ATI mode until you have learnt to fly in GPS mode, until you've done all the different assignments in, ad, um, in GPS mode first. So beginning with a few tips to help you fly better and to learn. So in the following few slides we'll introduce some general tips and then later on what, what we'll do with the introduction to each um, flight component in the assessment we'll give you some information prior to showing you a video of how to do it. So probably the most basic tip that we can give you is 
take your time fly only at walking pace and I know that may sound really slow but the test isn't about how fast you can fly it's not about how fast you can fly around the course or do the various tests that are in the assessment but it's really about how well you control your aircraft if you take your time you'll be able to focus on how you approach a turn or plan an ascent. So tip number one, take your time, fly at walking pace. The really good thing about a multi-rotor is that you can stop at any time. When you let go and let those sticks center, the aircraft will stop. So if you become disorientated and you're wondering what the um, multi-rotor is doing, Simply let go of your sticks, let them centre and the craft will stop. This is true for GPS mode and even if it's in ADI mode, the worst that the craft will do is simply go level and drift a bit. Here's another tip for beginners that's helpful when you're first starting out. Remember that you turn in the same direction for every turn in a circuit. Basically that means that your um, roll and your, your direction on the sticks are the same for each turn in the circuit. This is especially true in GPS mode and pretty much true for ADI mode if there's not much wind. On the first turn your craft is facing away from you. So it's pretty easy to figure out which direction to push the sticks. And now that you've got the pattern on the first turn, you can repeat that pattern for each turn around the circuit. Also remember that yaw and roll for a bank turn, the sticks move in the same direction. Both either move left or both either move right. Alright, another safety tip. This one is about taking off and landing. It's actually good practice to keep your drone face out during takeoff and landing. But what we what we mean by um, face out is simply what you see right there. Um, I'm looking at the back of the drone. The drone is pointing away from me. We call that face out. So during takeoff and landing, it can be a fairly stressful situation. And so to minimise that stress and not have to worry about the orientation issue, basically takeoff and landings should always be performed face out. And there you have it. No real drama. All I need to really think about is just that throttle. Now, it's also good practice to return the drone back to home position with the drone face out and that way you're only dragging the stick back. So rather than bring that drone back face in and we'll just demonstrate that pretty briefly. Um, face in you're sort of like thinking about orientation, you think about which way that drone is pointing, you're trying to control that, you're bringing it back, um, movements are reversed. It's actually better practice to bring that drone face out. So here we are out there. So rather than bring that drone back like this, face in, we turn the drone face out, looking at the back of the drone, and all that you need to do is think about dragging that stick back. Left is left, right is right on the roll. Positioning the drone, bring her to a stop, and then doing that vertical landing. So yes, face out is the way to go. Take off and landing, and returning the drone back to safe position of home. So now let's talk about drone orientation and some tips for beginners. It's all good when you've got the drone facing away from you, that's face out like you're going to see right now. If you push the pitch stick forward, the drone will move forward. If you pull it back, the drone will move backwards, back towards you. 
If you push it left, the drone will move left. If you move it right, the drone will move right. However, that's all good until you have the drone pointing towards you. So in this case, if I push the stick to the left, the drone will go to the right. And if I push the stick to the right, the drone will go to the left. If I push the stick forward, the drone will move forward, but relative to the drone itself. It's, and if I pull it back, then the drone will move backwards relative to the drone. So the movements on the pitch and roll stick reverse when the drone is facing inward. Now the movements on the left hand stick don't reverse. You'll notice that when you throttle up or raise the left hand stick the drone will ascend and when you pull that stick down the drone will go down and that doesn't matter which way the drone is facing you'll always get that result up is up down is down if you think in terms of rotation for the left hand your um, and right hand your instead of left hand turn and right hand turn then that movement doesn't reverse either your does not reverse no matter which way you point the drone so if you move the your stick right you will rotate that drone clockwise so pushing it right will create a right hand turn sorry not only create a right hand turn but also rotate the drone clockwise in fact a right hand circuit is a clockwise circuit and pushing the yaw stick left will create an anti-clockwise rotation and it doesn't matter which way obviously the drone is pointing you will always get that result so in summary the pitch and roll stick on the right hand side will reverse as if the drone is pointing towards you whereas the movements on the left hand side that's up and down and yaw will not reverse no matter which way you're pointing if you think of your in terms of a direction in terms of rotation rather than a left or right hand turn the other thing you want to do guys is fly at about two meters high don't fly too low this is far too low it's dangerous fly three mistakes high that height off the ground is actually dangerous. If you make a mistake, you hit the ground, and that's the end of the flight, and maybe the end of your drone. One of the biggest tips I can give you, and one of the most important ones, I believe, for flying the multi-rotor in general, is that all forward flight is achieved by pushing that pitch stick forward. Now, you might say, well, that's pretty basic, and it is. But when you think about it, that's what you're doing. The only way that that drone is going to move forward is by pushing that stick forward. And you'll be surprised at the number of times I have to call out, A, keep going forward because someone stopped and now they're going sideways and they're wondering why nothing's happening. It must be something that happens in our brain. I don't know. But you push that stick forward and you basically rock the stick left and right in order to correct the track if the drone starts drifting off left or right of the track. So if the drone is already pointing parallel to the track, then all that you require is that forward stick and a roll correction to keep it on track. Your without roll will not fix drift. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they do not roll to correct drift your will just allow the drone to continue to roll um, drift sideways and that's dangerous so here we are going along a track and we're going down a center line here of a runway you notice that the drone is basically pointing parallel to the track and any correction that we're making is with roll so the dominant movement is pushing the stick forward and then we're adding a bit of roll left or right to keep that thing on track now here we're just going to go off the track a little bit more to show you what I mean so we're parallel to the track so to bring it back to the track we're rolling left back onto the track while keeping that stick moving forward 
As I say, that's one of the best, biggest tips that I can give you. And the same thing is happening when you're actually doing that coordinated turn around a circle. Except this time, you're adding to the roll forward stick and roll correction, you're adding the yaw to make the drone continue to change heading. So I hope, hope that helps. Several assessments are based on flying a pattern over cones. And when you're doing that pattern, you might find that you miss a cone. You might feel that you have, um, haven't quite got to the cone or you've passed the cone. If you miss a cone, don't go back. Begin by concentrating on flying the circuit or the pattern rather than accuracy in lining up with the cones. Accuracy will come with practice, and you can improve your accuracy next time round you fly the circuit. Now there's a few important things to consider when you're taking off and landing with your drone. The first thing you want to do is not have the drone too far away from you. Three metres is good. The reason for this is that during takeoff and landing, you don't want to take off or land too far away from you. So as you take off, you'll actually find that you want to control the descent up to your hover height. And you want to also, for landing, control the descent. Now it just so happens that the further the drone is away from you, the harder it is to actually tell where that thing is landing. And not only that, that as it is landing, to know whether that drone is moving forward or not. And you don't want the drone moving forward or, or even sideways on landing because if that happens, the drone can tip over and it will show you what that looks like on another video. Okay, so I'll just bring that drone back towards me. And I yawed it a bit, I didn't need to yaw it a bit, it's just a thing about the simulator, it's a bit sensitive. Okay, so on takeoff, I'm going to bring that, raise that stick, get that thing off the ground, and get that thing up to a height that's just above my head height, and that will be the hover position. Now there's one place that you don't want to spend too much time in and that is about this height above the ground. It is the ground effect zone. In that zone, your drone will actually move sideways. It will hover all over the place. It will be hard to control, especially during landing. So, either not just for landing, but also for taking off, just get out of that zone really quickly. Don't have to thrash the thing out of the zone. And just bring her up to hover height and that's a safe place to be with taking off and landing and in, indeed hovering. So as I said, make sure that takeoff and landings are vertical, that they're not too far in front of you so you can see where you're landing, and when you come in for a landing, make sure that you don't spend too much time in that ground effect zone, which is about the width of the drone above the ground. first thing you'll be assessed on is how well you can take off and land. Now as we've mentioned before, you must take off and land with the drone facing out from you. So what we're going to do here is on the simulator to show you that from center throttle position, which is normal for your DJI controller, raise your stick gently and just hover at about the 2 meter height. Then we'd like to see you maintain that hover for a few seconds and then land that drone vertically, face out and quietly on the ground and then design the drone when you're there. It's important when landing that you come down vertically and that you don't have any sideways or forward movement. So here we'll illustrate with forward movement on landing.
drone touches the ground, rolls over. And now that drone could be upside down on the ground with the motors trying to cut the lawn. On a DJI, those motors won't stop automatically, so therefore you need to issue a command stop. That means drag both sticks down and into the center. This is also a good reason why it's important not to land too far away from you, because it's very hard to see that drone moving forward when you're coming down if the drone is quite a distance away from you. Generally, you need to have that drone about 3 metres in front of you when you're landing. Rotate your test. In this test, you're asked to do a rotate following a successful takeoff and hover at 2 metres. So from, from a 2 metre height hovering in front of you, you're asked to rotate 90 degrees in one way. Then rotate back 180 degrees the other way. And then finally, return to facing away from yourself by rotating 90 degrees. This must be able to be performed in both GPS and ADI mode. And it's not that easy to perform in ADI mode, particularly if there's some wind. I consider this probably the hardest test of all in ADI mode, a real test of flying skill. Following the yaw left and right, you'll then land again. Be looking for accuracy, stable hover and accuracy throughout the yaw movement. All right, we're going to do that yaw in GPS mode. Nice, quiet takeoff up to hover position. We're going to yaw to the left, 90 degrees. Nice, quiet yaw, not too fast, at the speed that you see right now. Now we're going to yaw all the way to the right, 180 degrees. And when we reach there, stop for a few seconds, and then yaw back, facing out, another yaw back. In other words, yaw back. 90 degrees to end up facing out. This is not an ADI mode, this is all done in GPS. In this simple move we're going to drive the drone out to the rear cone, straight line, stop over the rear cone and still with the drone facing out, drive the drone back to the home position. We'll demonstrate that now. All right, now that you've mastered takeoff and landing, the next thing we're going to practice is just driving that drone somewhere. So, simple move, a um, bit of skill involved because we're going to fly between two cones. We're just pushing that stick forward, the pitch stick forward, moving that drone forward, driving it out to the rear cone. When we're over the rear cone, we're going to stop over the rear cone. We're not going to turn around anything, we're just going to simply stop. Notice in all this time we haven't yawed that drone, we haven't rotated it. No need to rotate the drone if it's already pointing out. We're going to use the roll to correct the track. So coming back home, back to the home cone, and simply going to stop over the home cone. Let it settle down there. So note those points when, when flying it. You don't need to steer it, you don't actually steer it to make it go to where you want it to go. If it's pointing in that direction, keep moving the drone forward or backwards and use the roll to correct the direction. So there you have it, out to the rear cone. And then we're going to drag that drone back along that line and only use the roll to correct, correct it if it goes off track. And there we have it, back home. In this simple move, we move, roll the drone left, right, all the way across those front cones, to the end cone, and then roll back to the centre. We'll demonstrate this shortly. Now in this next move, this practice move, we're going to simply roll the drone across the front cones. Let me demonstrate. So, starting from a home position, 2 metres high, drone facing out, we're not going to touch the yaw. 
we're simply going to roll. So because it's facing out, if I want it to go left, I'm just going to roll left. So it's travelling along that line. On a nice calm day, GPS mode, the drone should track pretty straight. Maintaining walking speed, it's quite a long distance across those, um, between the uh, cones. They're actually 12 metres apart from centre. So you get bored and you sort of like speed up. Over that cone now, good enough. Now we're going to roll that drone all the way across to the cone on the direct opposite end of this line. Now if you need to correct the track, again, don't use uh, your to steer it. Simply use, in this case, we're going to have to use the pitch to pull it backwards or forwards on that track. So far we haven't needed to do it. So we're rolling along. That other cone in the background is, is the rear cone. It's not one on the front line. So moving across, notice that it's behind that cone. We should have been correcting that as we moved along, not at the end. In real life, you have a much better field of view and you can see where that drone's heading. Uh, simulator, the field of view is pretty narrow, so you can't sort of like see out of the side of your eyes. You don't have that peripheral vision. So, you know, You'd like, your primary movement is a roll, but you would correct that manoeuvre with the pitch to pull it forwards or backwards on that line. And here we are back home. There you go. Close enough. This simulator tends to drift. So that's just practicing a roll left and right. We call this test the nose in flight. Basically you take off and hover at the 2 meter altitude again. This time you go out to the um, centre rear cone, hover over that cone, then rotate 180 degrees so that the drone is now facing you, and fly back to the original cone, the takeoff cone, and hover there. That's flying face in. Remaining face in, you'll be asked to either go left or right from that position to the left or right cones immediately in front of you. So from that position, you might be asked to go to the right cone, and then you'd be asked to travel across to the left cone, and then return to the centre, hovering over each cone on the way. From the centre position, you'd be then asked to land nose in. This is a test of how well you can orientate your craft especially since we'll be flying in reverse direction to normal. We will look at which way you push the stick initially in order to fly to the left or right cone. Let's fly in a direct line out to the rear cone. And when you get there, simply stop the drone, rotate it, so that it is pointing towards us and you know that it's pointing towards you because the front legs on the drone, I'll just point them to you, will be lined up. You can't see the back legs. When the, when the drone's pointing towards you, move the stick forward and drive that thing home, making sure you've got your orientation right and keeping it on course to get back to the home position. From the home position, we'd also like to see you roll that drone across the front cones, like so, not too fast, about walking pace, keeping that drone still facing in, all the way over to, say the left hand cone, we'll tell you which direction to push the stick, uh, not push the stick, but which direction we want the drone to go on the day and then roll that drone all the way over across the front, not too fast, keeping that drone face in. Now some drones like the Phantom 4, you'll find this pretty easy to do because it's pretty stable. Lesser drones like the Phantom 3, they will tend to drift and you'll have to correct that. So here we are, 
over on the right hand cone, stop over that and you'll notice it drifted a bit. We're not going to correct it because we, we expected it to do that and then roll it back to center position keeping it face in. We're not going to change the ewer in other words. Back to the center cone and stop over the center cone and that's now on this one we're going to do a square circuit. So we start off at the home position, fly our drone out to the left hand cone on the front line, turn it 90 degrees, drive it straight to the rear cone on the left hand side, drive it all the way across the back, past the centre cone on the rear, round this cone, back along here, and then back to the start. We'll now demonstrate that. Right, in this test we're going to fly a square circuit around the cones. Um, so starting off at home position I'm going to rotate that drone 90 degrees and make a point to the first cone. So off we go, forward stick, that's all that's needed. Lead with the, lead with the direction of travel. Make it the dominant movement. Now as that drone is going along I'm making minor corrections left or right with the roll, not the yaw. So I'm over the next cone, 90 degree turn, and if I did that turn nicely it'll pretty much be pointing to the next cone because the course is actually square. Here we are, over that cone, 90 degree turn, off to the next cone. Bit of a long straight here so the tendency would be to speed up and I'm also sort of like slightly off off field, slightly wide, so I'll roll in a bit as I'm traveling along. I won't stop and roll in, I'll just do it as I'm moving forward. Primary movement rules guys, then turn in 90 degrees, get off to the next cone, this is the last one before the final. In fact I'm going to be turning final if this was a, a, a circuit for a, an aircraft at a flying field, so a little bit off there, but yes, forward we go. And keep it going, Rob. Always hard to see on a simulator where you're actually at. And finally back to home. Put the brake on. And there we are, back home. That's a square circuit. Um, good practice. Try not to stop at each corner. Use roll to correct the track as it's moving along. And do a 90 degree turn at each turn. And each turn, it's always the same direction, so you don't really have to think about orientation. If it's a right hand circuit, that means a clockwise circuit, it's just a right hand turn at every cone. So there you have it, that's a uh, circuit, a square circuit following the outside cones. So we call this test the either the vertical box or the vertical window. Initially you take off, nose out, to a 2 meter hover, and then still nose out, you will move sideways to a position halfway between you and the 10 meter cone where you will then hover and then ascend to 5 meters go across the top to the left of you to a position that's halfway between you and the 10 meter cone on the left and then you will descend come across back to the center hover and then land So here we have the vertical box or vertical window as people call it. Start off by moving the drone or rolling the drone horizontally, same height as hover height, out halfway between the two front cones. When you're halfway there, stop and only using the throttle go up to about 5 meters height. Then when you get there, When you get there, stop, then go across, roll across, and on those rolls, remember to use the pitch if you have to to correct, uh, correct the drone to keep it on that uh, front line between the two front end cones. Now we're halfway between the two 
cones on the left, the center cone and the left hand cone. Now we're going to descend. All as we do is just drag down the throttle. We don't touch pitch and roll. Remember this is in GPS mode. It won't, it won't, shouldn't drift. Now we're back down to hover height. When you're back down to hover height, you're going to stop and then simply use roll only. Don't use the throttle. Don't need to correct the height unless it's badly out of whack. Then roll it back into the center cone and when you get to the center cone stop over that center cone and that's the end of the test that's all you need to do for that test vertical window not too complicated now we'll take a look at circuits now these circuits should be able to be completed in both directions and what we'll do is we'll show you one direction as per usual take off from your home position up to an altitude of about two meters hover there then you're 90 degrees facing the first cone of the direction of the circuit that you're going to travel in. Once you reach, once you're pointing to the first cone, then start climbing out at 45 degrees until you reach a circuit height of about 20 meters. Maintaining that altitude all the way around the circuit, go from one cone to the other as you go around the circuit performing nicely banked yaw turns at each cone, maintaining that altitude height. Careful on that back straight that you don't travel too fast. Completing the circuit, coming back to the beginning, Be prepare to descend again back to the home position with two meter altitude at 45 degrees, and that completes the circuit. We are looking for smooth flying with even turns, controlled ascent and descent, and the ability to accurately position the moving aircraft while ascending and descending. Finally, to be able to compensate for any crosswind around the circuit. We'll have a look at some circuit tips to help you as a beginner. We know that flying a circuit isn't easy, and it's a lot to think about when you're a beginner. One way in which you can overcome this is to break the circuit down into its component parts. So for instance, you can start by practicing climbs and descents. So from a hover, climbing at 45 degrees, what you'd be doing is you'd be pushing the stick forward and throttling up until you get that angle. While at that height, you can come back at 45 degrees, pushing the stick forward and lowering the throttle to get that descent angle. And you can practice this until you master just how much stick movement you need to make this happen. Okay, here we are with a ramped circuit going to begin at hover height we're going to rotate first to point in the direction of travel lead off with the pitch stick the forward stick to create your ground speed and control your ground speed and use the throttle to create the angle we want 45 degrees when you're over the left hand cone on the front do a 90 degree yaw finish that yaw and just point straight ahead to the rear cone traveling along in a straight line and only turn over the cone. So turn over that cone 90 degree and head along the back straight. If at any time we find ourselves um, either going in or out of the circuit, use the roll to roll in or out. Remember that rolling in is the same direction as your yaw direction on the yaw stick. Approach each cone fairly slowly and you'll find that it'll go around fairly nicely particularly this final cone. So everything kind of happens at once here. We turn 90 degrees, we go ahead, and then we start descending at 45 degrees, controlling that forward movement with the pitch stick, keeping that forward movement slow, and coming back to a stop, back to home position. And then you have it, and then you, then you can turn out and end, end the move. So that's the ramped circuit.
In this one we're going to have a look at how to create a radius turn, a good turning circle basically. So to create a circle you need to make the drone go forward. You also need to yaw the drone in the direction that you want to create that circle. And the third thing you need to do to stop that drone um, going out of the circle, you need to roll the drone into the circle. That means you push the roll stick in the same direction as your yaw stick. And that will create a force into the centre of the turn that will counteract the centrifugal force trying to drive that drone out of the turn. Takes a bit of practice, it's a bit of coordination of three movements, but after a while you just begin to do it quite naturally once you uh, get the hang of it. We'll now have a look at test number eight, which we'll call a horizontal circuit around the front cones. That is, it's it's a circuit that's only flying around the front cones in the in the pattern. Now this test consists of two parts and to some extent it looks a little bit like a figure 8 although it's not exactly a figure 8 as we'll soon see. The two parts consist of first of all turns away from the controller and then turns toward the controller as you fly around each of the left and the right hand cones on that front circuit. So let's detail that. Starting first from your usual 2 meter altitude the next thing you do is you make a right hand your turn toward the right hand cone and then you head towards that right hand cone at a nice walking pace and in a smooth motion not as you see on the screen right now but in a smooth motion you continue round 180 degree your turn around that right hand cone bit of banking in so that you don't um, flare out then you have to travel over to the left hand cone at a slight angle and it's exaggerated on the screen here because of the distance across and the scale but you continue over to the um, left hand cone to do another turn away from you 180 degrees again banking in to stop it flaring out and then you complete that turn by a smooth motion which continues along the back towards the left hand cone which we'll detail on the next, next slide. So continuing along that back straight, around now the right hand turn, we're going to do a turn towards the controller, then we're going to fly on a diagonal across the back to the left hand cone so that we can do another 180 degree turn around the cone on the left hand side. Nice continuous smooth motion and then come back to the front, the starting point and turn 180 degrees back well back away from you to finish finish the course in that horizontal circuit we're looking for constant altitude and a nice radius of about two meters plus or minus two meters around the cone each cone so what we'd like to see you do is travel up towards the cone at walking pace and as you get closer to the cone, remember to bank into the circuit, into the circle, and yaw around as you go around. So it's yaw 180 degrees and bank into the circuit to prevent yourself sliding out. We're looking for a nice turn around the cone. Nice approach to the cone and a nice turn like this around the cone to return and head off to the other cone. Now we're going to have a look at the front horizontal circuit. Some people call it the figure eight. It's not quite a figure eight. We're going to start by about two, three meters in front. That's this side of the front cone. Travel along parallel to the center line. Still in GPS mode, remember, these are all GPS mode moves. Still heading along parallel. And when that cone is on this case, on the left hand side of me, I'm going to do an outward turn, coordinated turn, like all turns are meant to be coordinated, around that cone, continuing that yaw until I'm just slightly pointing inwards because I want to cross the center cone on the way back. Here we are, 
pretty much at that centre cone. Continuing that forward movement and using the roll to correct the line of travel. Don't steer with the yaw. We're only going to use the yaw to go round. Here we are, another coordinated turn round the left hand cone. Outward turn as well. Now we're going to reverse the pattern now and we're going to reverse it by travelling along the back about 3-4 metres behind that centre line between the two end cones. Travelling along, not too fast, don't want to speed up. Once you speed up things go wrong. It's even a little bit fast on this but it's working. Travelling along, now we're on the uh, behind the right hand cone. We're now going to do an inward turn. Careful not to flare out. Don't forget to use that roll to pull that circle in when it starts flaring out. Your continues until we're just slightly pointing inward a bit. Again, so we're going to cross that center cone so we end up behind the left hand cone on the left hand side. Here we are, traveling along. Not too fast, not getting carried away, taking our time. Finally we get to that left hand front cone and now we're going to turn inward. Our second inward turn, nice coordinated turn using the roll to stop it flaring out. Now we're just going to continue straight parallel to that centre line until we reach the centre cone again where we will stop. And here we are, back at the centre cone. And that ends, ends that circuit. Be able to demonstrate that you can fly um, your drone in anti mode. You must be able to land in anti mode. So the scenario is like you're out in the paddock, you lose GPS fix, and you have to bring that drone back and land it. So just some uh, words of caution about anti mode. When your drone is in anti mode, the drone will drift. You don't need to make big movements of the stick. Um, to keep it in one position. If there's a wind, you'll find that your um, pitch and roll stick, you'll have to find a position which will hold that drone in one position against the wind. And if at any time you get into trouble, you can always flick it back into GPS mode. Make sure that you've got enough height off the deck because you don't want to hit the ground and just lock that drone in because as soon as you put that back into GPS that drone will be locked in. The other thing is make sure that that drone remains facing away from you. So don't yaw the drone in anti mode. Keep it facing away from you. Now we're going to have a look at um, hovering and landing in anti mode. So we're taking off in GPS and we're going to hover over the home cone. So we're just taking it out, putting it over that home cone and hovering at our normal just above head height, 2 meter height from the ground. Now soon we'll turn it into atti mode. So turn it into atti mode, remember that the thing might float away. Stabilize it over that home cone, we're just going to hover over that home cone. Remembering that center stick is no longer center stick. Now we're going to land, we're going to bring it back towards us where we took off and vertically descend, trying to keep that drone stable, not moving sideways left or right. And when we've landed we can put it back into GPS mode and cut the drone. going to go out from the front cone to the rear cone in ATI mode, starting off with a GPS hold, turning to ATI, establishing a stable hover over that home cone, travelling out, not using yaw to steer it, just using roll to keep it on track, out at that rear cone, applying the brakes when you get there, stable hover over it, and now when you're ready, drag that stick backwards keeping it on track with the roll and then establishing a stable hover over the front cone again and that completes the out and back. 
Now we're going to do a your and Atti mode, starting off with GPS as normal, putting her into Atti, stable hover, when ready, your, in this case your to the left, 90 degrees, keeping that drone over the home cone as a reference point, going 180 degrees in the other direction, again keeping that drone over that home cone as a reference point, you're allowed um, a meter radius drift so that's pretty generous and then return face out and that's it now in this move we're going to simulate a GPS failure so we're just hovering over the home cone in GPS we're flying out in GPS mode out beyond the rear cones and in this case we're going to ask you to yaw to the left about 90 degrees and when you're ready put it into atti mode and when it's in atti mode keep that as a stable hover out there a little bit drift there but we can use the backdrop as a reference point turn her face out still in atti and drag her back without going over top of any of the cones in other words just go through the middle of the circuit bring her back stop her in front of us bring her across so it's directly in front of us stable hover and when you're ready start descending vertically for an atti landing about three meters in front of where you're standing and so here we are descending making sure we don't drift too far to the left or right and there you have it a nice atti landing back to gps and off so here we are just demonstrating atti atti mode here we have it in gps mode it's on the ground our simulator has a moderate breeze going at the moment so I'm going to take off in GPS mode and even in that mode I would expect the drone to just move slightly on takeoff. Notice that the breeze is coming back in our face so needed to make sure that that drone was staying face out on liftoff. So here it is hovering just staying there in space now I'm going to put it into Atti mode. Remember that as soon as you put it into Atti mode, that drone's going to go with the wind. Also notice that with a little bit of stick movement, I can hold that drone away from me. It's getting a little bit too close there, even though the zoom setting on this simulator makes it look much closer than it is. But it's still, I want to hold it in that position. Notice that because, of, because there's a breeze, I need to hold the pitch stick forward and just hold it against that breeze that's trying to drive it back towards me. There you go. So there's no neutral position in anti mode, you can't let go of that stick and let it go back to center. There's no center, there's no GPS, so it will not lock. Remember, at any time, if I get into trouble on this test, I can flicker back into GPS mode and see the green lights come back on and that thing will just hold there so if you're in trouble as I mentioned before you can flicker into the GPS mode so I'm going to go back to Atti with this breeze hover there and land that drone in a breeze so we'll give it a go and there it is landed it and we could cut but I'm going to um, just leave it there basking in the sun. So one of the common problems with drones is they don't take long to disappear. You don't have to go far before they disappear from view. In fact the Phantom 3, Phantom 4, once you get beyond 200 meters it's actually hard to tell which way it's facing and what's below you. In this test we're going to show you um, how to determine the orientation of your drone um, given that you can't see the lights, your app isn't working and you can't see on the app which way it's pointing because there's actually a radar on the, app, on the DJI app anyway. So we're going to go out, push your way out from us, bye bye drone. Off into the distance. 
nice thing about the simulator is I can just plug in a view like that and you can see close up what it's doing and then you can sort of like zoom out like that and it's a long way away. The lights are a bit bright on the simulator and in real life they'd be nothing like that unless you're flying at night. So that drone we already know is face out. So that means that if we roll the stick to the right then the drone will move to the right and we move it to the left it'll move to the left. That tells us which way it's pointing. Now let's just try that drone with it pointing face in and I've zoomed in so you can see it. Light her up. Bang on! Legs are lined up. She's pointing straight in at us. Zoom out. Alright, this time when I push the stick right it moves left. So that tells me that the drone is facing in. So very good. At least we know the drone is facing in. But what say the drone is not only facing in, it's also off on an angle. So there you go, put it off on an angle. It's off on an angle to our right. I'll zoom out and we'll test that. So again, if we move the stick right, it goes left. You move the stick left, it goes right. If we move the stick forward, you'll also notice that the thing is moving right. That tells us that that drone is not only facing in, but it's also facing into the right quadrant of that circle of orientation. So all it takes for me to fix that now is try to rotate that so that's facing out. I'm going to guess I can't set it a distance. Give it a left. Give it a right. Yes, it's facing out. Push it forward. Pull it back. She's basically pointing straight out as you can see. Now I can bring that drone home. And because it's off to the right hand side I'm going to pull it back and off to one side. And there you go. I've got that drone back. Disorientated for a while, but using stick movements, I could find out which way that thing is pointing and bring it home. Well, that's all we have in this video. Hope this video has helped you to be able to fly confidently and safely. Thank you for watching.